So the example that I'm going to share is representative of some of the things that we'll be doing in our Revit class. Now this project that I'm displaying for you is a project that we use in the systems that we'll be using in the systems class to calculate heat gain and heat loss uh, for this particular building. So you won't be required to duplicate this building. And in fact, I would prefer that you did it uh, for this class. We'll also need to have a garage, which this project does not have. Um, so that this wouldn't satisfy the requirements. But you would do a first sheet would be your site location in the sheet list. So um, Revit makes this sheet list for you automatically, which is a very nice feature. And you can see that very easily. And then Revit also makes some very nice uh, renderings, which uh, you will definitely be doing in this class. And then we can also take images and put them into our Revit title blocks. So basically everything you're seeing here we'll be doing in class. We'll have title blocks. We'll have sheet lists, which will explain the sheet number the name of every sheet, uh, which explains what's on those sheets, and then some cute renderings of our, the, your house that you're, you're going to design and uh, model in this class, and then a site location, because we need to tell someone where this is going to go. A very simple site plan, which shows the roof, uh, sidewalk, and grass around there. So that's a, the site plan is something that we'll do in this class as well. And then we'll have a basement plan, which explains the, the dimensions of the uh, basement walls and the location of the columns that hold up the beams that would support the, the floor above. And then we'll have some dimensions. We want to show some dimensions for the uh, overall and the offset. So the dimensions for the project will be simple. It's overall, offsets, center lines. So the farthest out away from the house dimension is an overall. That's from the face of the house to the face of the house. The next string of dimensions is the offsets, which is for every time there's an offset in your house, you'll have to have a dimension that explains what that distance is. And then finally, we'll have center line dimensions for the location of the windows and the doors. And then we'll just have a very simple floor plan which shows the kitchen, the bathroom, the sink, the closets, an office space, this particular example is a first floor master bedroom with a closet and a bathroom, a private bathroom, and then stairs that go upstairs. When you get upstairs, I'm sorry, we're still on the first floor. We use Revit to label our rooms uh, that automatically tells us the amount of square footage of each of those rooms, which can be important to us if we're trying to stay within a certain uh, square footage. And then we go up to the second floor, which again, has the same things, the overall, the offsets, and the center lines to the windows. Uh, so that when the carpenters go to lay this out, they know exactly where you want your objects to be located. And then again, using Revit to create the uh, room names and uh, automatically that these are called tags and Revit will automatically tell us what the square foot of each room is, which is kind of useful. We always have to do a roof plan. We wanna make sure that on our roof plan, one of the things that I see quite often is the students are not paying attention to the view range and it ends up clipping their roof so that we can't see the absolute peak of it. Uh, so many of these things that I'm speaking of right now won't make sense, but in the end, at the end of the class, it, it will make sense. So then we have simple elevations. We have a front elevation, uh, left side elevation, rear elevation, and right side elevation. And you'll notice that we have uh, tags on our windows that tell us what the window information is about those those windows and then we start cutting sections through the through the building to show how we want the home to be um, constructed now you're seeing floor framing in here which is required but uh, you're also seeing some wall framing which is not required uh, for this class that's a little that would be a little bit much for uh, a 15-week class it's really a 14-week class the 15th week is the final exam okay so anyway we can see that we cut sections through the through the house 
And the idea about the sections is, is I'm going to go back to the floor plan where it shows the sections. And wherever there's a jog in the building or some different piece of information is presented, then we'll have another section that cuts through that house. So I want to make sure that we always cut through the stairs. And then I want to cut through every time there's a jog in the building. So here's a jog. Here's a different jog. Here's another jog. And then finally, here's another jog here. So you can see the, how we lay out and determine how many sections we need. Uh, and then Revit automatically makes these sections for us, which is very nice. And then for the systems class, they'll have to do lighting, which uh, is not required of, of you in, in uh, this class. Uh, the Revit uh, 2410 class is not required to do the, to do the lighting. Uh, the students in the systems class get a blank sheet and they have to put the, their own lighting in. And then we have switches. We need to turn lights on and off. And then we have outlets, which is where you want to plug in your uh, smartphone, for example, so you can get some energy to continue to use it. Second floor lighting, second floor electrical. And then we have uh, schedules. One of the nice features of Revit is that they make schedules. And you can see that they'll tell me how many fixtures I have and then what those uh, electrical fixtures are. And again, it'll tell me here my lighting fixture schedule, tells me what my lighting fixtures, uh, the, the count is, and it describes them and it tells me you know, what the voltage is and the wattage is. And that's, um, we will make some schedules, but we won't be making electrical schedules since you're not required to put electrical in. And then we can lay out some furniture, which is a very nice process. You take a look at the, uh, display to if you were trying to show this to a potential client or or your client you could show them how the the furniture could be laid out and it helps them to get a good idea them being the client to get a good idea of what the the spaces of, of their house or their future house would be and then Revit also creates renderings so we'll be able to make some nice renderings of uh, our our ideas so that we can present that to the client in this case, your client is me, the professor, and you'll be able to show your ideas to me uh, in your, uh, in, as you progress through your uh, design and creation of your Revit model. We can see that we have lighting. Um, for rendering purposes, it's a good idea to put some lighting into, the, into your ceiling so that you can light the inside of your um, uh, uh, model. But that lighting is not a requirement of of the uh, of the class. Uh, it's just a requirement to to just to demonstrate your work. So this is the office. It's a two story office, and then this would be the entrance. Uh, so you can peruse the renderings, and then it's nice to spin the house around. So you notice I'm cutting through at the higher portion of the first floor wall, and I just look at all four uh, corners of of what the house looks like uh, in a bird's eye. And then we have the same feature for the second floor, so people can get a very good understanding uh, of what the, the house actually, how it really functions in, in, uh, in uh, some nice three-dimensional graphics. And then there's some more renderings. Then framing will be a requirement. Well, you, you'll have to show how you intend to uh, frame the floor. And that's simply, we span from one point to another so the ends of the floor joists, for example, are being supported by something, either a beam, a wall, or an exterior wall. And then everything else sits on top of that, is supported on top of that on the first floor. And then the same thing with the second floor. We need to show how we're going to frame our uh, second floor. Revit does that quite, sim quite easily, not, not uh, intellectually. We have to uh, think about where the uh, bearing points would be hopefully you can apply the structures classes that you've had previous to this one or the concepts of that to understand how we how we put in our structure the actual implementation of the structure uh in revit is very simple the complicated part is really understanding where you're going to rest your uh floor joists on for example you can see the floor joists are resting on this wall and this wall then they're resting on this wall and this wall then this wall and all the way across to that wall so you have to think about it. You know, if we're using two by twelves, which we are going to 
use in this project in this class then you can span around 20 feet so make sure that you have some place inside of your house that you're going to be able to rest your um, floor joists on and you can see don't try to span greater than 20 feet that becomes a really complicated project for you in in this class what's important is the placement of the floor joist if they span a little bit more than 20 feet or a little bit less than 20 feet or a lot less than 20 feet i'm not really uh um, concerned about that as a as an issue i'm concerned uh, about the logical placement of it uh, to a little bit but the actual placement is the important part in this class and then these are different wall types and you have a copy of this a PDF in uh, on Blackboard. So you'll be able to take a look at that. But we are going to make uh, many of these walls, if not all of these walls, individually. That will be the first day of class. These are just the colored versions of these, so there's not, don't get overwhelmed and think that there's a lot of walls to make. But we'll make these different individual walls and then we'll stack them on top of each other, uh, which makes Revit a very simple, uh, uh, tool to make some very uh, wonderful uh, designs. So if you come back to here and take a look at one of these walls uh, in the section, you can see that this is a this is an assembly of all of the different wall types that you saw on the other sheet. And we just stack them all together and then we have it's very easy to, to move those walls around and create our model quite uh, quite quickly. So then we need to tell uh, the uh, contractor or the client what when we have symbols on our sheets what do those symbols mean and then this is creating a legend which is very simple to do and uh, most of these things i'm showing you uh, once they're created once they can be reused over and over and over again from uh, from project to project, so it uh, really eliminates a tremendous amount of effort uh, because it's much, once the work is done, it doesn't need to be done a second time. And then we have schedules that uh, will extract the door uh, and window uh, components, which I will like to know uh, from you. And then we also have all of the different wall types. Now this is important, not in this class, but it's important in the systems class because when we calculate heat loss, from a building we need one of the variables that we need to know the answer is is what's the square footage of all of those different wall types and if you go back to the wall types you can see in the systems that we actually provide insulating values for each of the components that are inside of those walls and that's part of the project for the uh, systems class but for this class it actually tells you what the materials are into that. You don't need to be concerned about what the insulation value is, but you do want to know what the what are the walls composed of. Um, those are individual walls, and the easiest way to name these, you can see, if you simply give them a number and remember what those numbers mean, then when you go back and try to assemble them as a stacked wall, it'll make much more sense to you. Um, it'll much be much easier and the simplicity or the logic of using uh, numbers, uh, particularly for your uh, wall types works much easier when you're trying to build a stacked wall. But uh, that really is, if you're listening to this for the first time, it really doesn't make any sense to you, uh, but it will as we progress throughout the class. So uh, this is simply just the, taking away all of the building materials except for the framing just to show how the house is actually put together and uh, that's essentially uh, what we'll be doing in the class uh, and uh, for Revit and a little bit or maybe a lot we'll be doing a lot less than what you're seeing here but there might be a little bit more complexity in your design now what I always say at the beginning of every class is don't make your house too complicated now, if you do that you're, you're going to make a lot of work for yourself and and uh, I, I'm evaluating your project based on a set of criteria, which is uh, laid for set forth in the in the rubric for both the final exam and the, the final project of the class. We spend 14 weeks uh, learning how to put together a house plan 
and then on the 15th week you'll show up uh, via zoom in this particular case and i will give you a, a floor plan of a house uh, that does not have a garage and you have three hours and 20 minutes to from scratch to to draw that house up uh, floor plans elevation sections roof plan uh, title block um, sheet list window schedule and door schedule you can you know spend 14 weeks learning how to do that and then on the 15th week you actually do it again for in a period of three hours and 20 minutes so i'm going to uh let's see pause this real quickly and now i'm actually into the revit program and i will go over this in class but i just want to point out that when we're working in in Revit and I'm helping you individually um, using the Zoom um, interface that if I'm trying to help you do something the first thing that I will tell you is which tab I would like you to deal with so you, you must remember this because it's uh, very frustrating for me when I say go to the uh, modify tab and i see you going over here over here or over here remember the tabs are at the top and that's the first part of the navigation to uh execute the command that we want to execute will occur it's going to be go to the tabs as you click on the different tabs different things appear in the ribbon and this is the ribbon okay so then i will navigate i'll tell you which part of the ribbon to go to you can see down at the bottom it says geometry modify view so i might say go to the architecture tab and then i might say go over to room and area uh, division of that ribbon for example or i might say go to the modify tab and then go over to the modify section of the ribbon that would be the second thing that i would Go, and then I will tell you what to click on within that. So I might say, go to the modify tab, go to the modified section of the ribbon, and then click on the move icon. And you can find out which icon is which by simply hovering over it, and it will stop and it will tell you what that, uh, what the name of the, what the action that that icon will actually do. But what I wanted to show you is. This is my standard template. So I've already got my template already made. I have all of my structural plans set up. All of my floor plans are set up. My ceiling plans, all of my 3D views are set up. My elevations and my sections are set up. And my legends are already made. My schedules are already made. Um, as I put components into the model, the schedule actually populates itself. So if I put a new window in to the model, it's gonna go immediately into the um, to the section and then I have my sheets already made up and what I wanted to show you here was in my section area I have my families and stacked walls and you can see these are what are called stacked walls and if we zoom in real close and maybe it'd be better if I change the uh, display to hidden lines but these are what we're going to be doing on the first day is making some stacked walls and you can see that basically this is a wall type this is a wall type this is a wall type and this is a wall type and we're going to make all of those different wall types originally individually and then we're going to stack them together and you can see that i have different uh, wall types here and then the other thing that i have is i have my library already loaded into my project of various components that i know that i'm going to use over and over again for example base cabinets and upper cabinets I have a cabinet with a, a micro rape drawer in it. I have my washer and dryer unit stacked there. I've got my nice range which uh, with a hood already. My kitchen uh, with a base cabinet, countertop, and a backsplash, dishwasher. Uh, yep, and then my refrigerator. I have some pantry cabinets, and then I have another cabinet here which shows that it has uh, a couple of ovens and another microwave in it as well. This is a simply electric uh, cooktop with toilet. And you can see that I have a, a mirror. This is a mirror, you can't see it. Um, a backsplash, a bathroom sink, and a counter underneath it. So this, this is um, for me, you know, as a architect who produces uh, architectural drawings, 
this is a very substantial time saver for me. Uh, for you, we'll have to build these for the first time, and, but you can, if this is something that you're going to use in your profession, you, know, you realize that once you've built it once, you can use it in uh, several models after that. And then the last thing I wanted to show is just a, a rendering of all of those components that I just showed you. I have my sliding glass door walls. Here's my cabinet that has two ovens in it and a microwave. There's a uh, pantry cabinet here, refrigerator, dishwasher. As I went through, kitchen sink, backsplash, countertop, sink below it, cooktop, island, uh, range which is hosted by a ceiling so you can see that I have to have a ceiling there in order for the for the range hood to actually work and what that means is some objects are hosted by the floor some objects are hosted by the wall and some objects are hosted by the ceiling and when as we get into the class you'll see that for example the door is hosted by a wall so you can't put a door in the middle of a room it has to go into a wall it's hosted by a wall the upper cabinets are hosted by a wall so you can't put them in the, you can't float them in the middle of the room. They have to rest up against a, a wall. And uh, some components, for example, maybe the, this uh, beautiful oven here, stove oven, has to have a floor in order to uh, rest it upon. So there are different components that need to be hosted by different things, but and that will all make sense as we progress into the class. But this is real simple now because as I'm laying out my kitchens, I can go and grab that and just put it right into my kitchen plan. I can put my island in, it already has a sink and it already has a nice um, uh, KitchenAid appliance sitting on top of that. So um, in our class, we're gonna do this individually. We have to make these kind of things and then put them into our project. But for me, once I put them in my template, you know, I've already got all of these things here and it's real simple to just drag them over or use the create similar uh, feature and take that object and put it right into my project. Now this is uh, one of the things that you as a student have the ability to do, which is use uh, Revit for free. I believe uh, it used to be for three years, but someone told me that they've changed it to, down to a year now. But you get it for a year, uh, absolutely free, no charge, the full version, not a, a abbreviated version of it. and. Uh, once you have your uh, membership with, as a student with Autodesk, you also have the ability to go render um, various things. So I can go back and you can see that I have a lot of different uh, renderings um, that the Revit has made for me and it's all free. Uh, well, for you, it's all free, but you, know, you can take a look at some of the renderings that Revit does. You know, I have a nice, uh, a very, very uh, expansive house here with a guest house or a pool house or uh, with a nice pool and a tennis court and uh, garages and uh, uh, pergolas. And, uh, you know, this is all rendered by, by Revit. So Revit makes it very easy. You can render this on your computer as well, but if you do, it makes it... Uh, difficult for you to continue to uh, work. Uh, basically, you have to wait until your, um, your project is completed before you can go back to work on it. So it's always better to send this up to the Revit server uh, or the Autodesk server and then uh, let, let the machine, let, let, let Autodesk uh, servers, which I think they rent from Amazon, uh, let them do the process or the heavy lifting while you can go back and work on your own uh, project on your uh, Revit uh, computer. If you, what I'm suggesting is if you can render on your own computer, which you have the ability to do, it kind of stops the process of work. So uh, it's, it's better to make sure that you have the ability to use the uh, Autodesk uh, servers and as a student you do get to use them for free as a professional of course professionals have to pay for that and I think that's a good start